tonight I'm just going to um, go through the presentation um, in this sequence. There will be a review of the engagement process and the design process, a presentation of the design development work. And then if we can hold comments and questions till the end of the presentation, that'd be great just in the interest of time. <clears throat> so I want to start off by acknowledging the significance of this project in a larger context, which is really that it is a metamorphosis. It's, it's symbolic of the transformation of this community and the ideals of, of this partnership between the city and the school district. And uh, it's just a real opportunity that, that we feel privileged to have taken a part in. <clears throat> We began with um, some community engagement work around the site planning, as you all know, through a series of community design workshops. We uh, helped locate buildings and programs on the site according to concerns and, and uh, issues that were raised during these workshops. And um, the evolution of the conceptual design, which you see on the bottom right, was really an organic process that weighed and considered many of the, um, uh, of, of the pieces of input that we received, both from elected officials and from community members parents, teachers, and uh, all concerned stakeholders. Um, it really was an iterative process and something that we felt uh, created a sense of ownership. So following the um, site planning work and conceptual design, we worked with uh, the community and, and stakeholders through a series of exercises uh, regarding aesthetics and visual preferences and uh, did some interesting work with um, uh, with our friend Chris Bowie using a, um, interactive voting technology where we associated imagery, imagery with words and really began to build a story of this design and, and the, the sort of the look and feel that resonated with people. <clears throat> our next um, uh, set of engagement work was uh, really some deep dives into the interior environments within the ECCL project and on the left you can see a, a series of focus group meetings that were held um, through December through March of this of this year um, and there were some really intensive uh, and iterative processes that we went through with teachers and staff uh, community services staff as well to um, really understand how these these spaces within the facility uh, need to work and function and the, the intricacies of how those are designed uh, was very informative um, in, in our process as we uh, entered the design development phase. What you see here are some um, early images of uh, the interior spaces that we used during these focus group workshops to help staff and, and teachers get a better sense of what the spaces would look and feel like and how they would function. So um, these were sort of early versions of uh, as the spaces began to take shape. And then um, <clears throat> uh, where we ended up uh, at the end of design development is um, again using the basis of the conceptual design for locating the elements on site but then really um, filling out and understanding the, the uh, nuts and bolts of how the spaces fit together and how the relationships that are embodied in this partnership are really manifest in the spaces. Um, so <clears throat> the design narrative, the story that, that we like to tell and, and that we want to share with you tonight is really about this metamorphosis that the city has undergone and, and how the, the architecture itself is emulating that metamorphosis in uh, the sense of flight. And so each point, each major entry point into the facility is um, uh, the user is greeted by a canopy that reaches outward and upward and uh, reminds people that you know Emeryville is soaring, still soaring to new heights and that um, as people enter this facility, it's not only a home, but it's a place where people can then fly out into the world and do great things. So there were five uh, key success criteria that, um, as we worked with the school board over these past few phases, uh, that we really um, focused on in our development of the work. Number one, increasing the quality of education through facility design. Number two, increasing safety for students. Number three, reducing overall facility operating expenses. Number four, authentic community and teacher engagement. And then finally, um, number five, providing a flexible facility that can adapt over time to a variety of uses and needs. <clears throat> it's important um, when we're talking about this project, not only symbolically as, as a, a model for future development and partnership, but also you know, in, in a very one-to-one um, uh, comparison um, strategy that, that we've used 
Um, these are all spaces that will exist at the new Emory Center campus that don't currently exist in the school facilities and, and the community service facilities. So, uh, school-based health center, family resources, um, three distinct learning center clusters within the school environment, um, teacher collaboration spaces, science-ready classrooms for grade 6-8, uh, a public library, classroom meeting rooms within the library for public use, um, a shared-use cafe, dedicated restrooms for all K-1 classrooms, um, a welcome center, a, a front door to the community if you will, uh, and then on-site parking. Um, and scheduled access to community use areas, uh, a game room, multi-use spaces, civic courtyard spaces. So again, these are all new and, and um, exciting opportunities for program that, that do exist within the design now and that are going to bring new life to the facility once it opens. Uh, the first piece of the work I want to share with you is um, related to the site uh, density and the site analysis. Um, so I have a few slides here uh, that directly address the uh, relationship of the facility to the open space and the ability for that space to accommodate um, active play among the students. <clears throat> so here you can see the um, existing uh, conditions at Emory Secondary. Um, uh, the aerial image, you can see the fields uh, to the north. The gym and pool complex on the bottom left um, obviously is, is to remain and then the, uh, the main high school building and um, subsequent admin and maintenance buildings will be demolished. So this is uh, what we call a figure ground diagram which shows the uh, sort of a black and white comparison between what's a building and what's um, landscape. And right now uh, you can see that the building covers virtually the entire southern half of the site. One of the remarkable things about this facility is that it, it actually, uh, the new design reduces the total building footprint, so it increases the amount of um, space that's open to the sky, and it also increases the, um, yeah, the, the density on the site. So by building up rather than out, um, you're allowing more of the site to be used for flexible outdoor uses. This is a, an interesting metric that um, helped us really understand the uh, power of, of that density and, and building up on the site. Um, and what you see here are uh, analyses of several schools in the area. Of course you have Annie Yates in the second column, which we're all familiar with, but then other high schools, um, and uh, not only high schools, but schools of um, from varying from K-8 to high school uh, around the Bay Area. And what you'll see here is the active outdoor density metric which is on the bottom of the chart which is essentially the the amount of students per acre of, of active play area and the proposed design for the ECCL has 188 whereas many of these other schools are, are you know double triple that number so um, we, we've heard the concerns about um, play area and how it's configured on this site and this is something that we feel is a, is a good demonstration of how this facility accommodates uh, those concerns and addresses them and also provides a um, you know a, a good measure of uh, of uh, proportions of uh, enclosed to outdoor space so uh, zooming into the site plan of the ECCL um, you can see here some highlighted zones for outdoor use uh, dedicated to different user groups within the facility so the green um, is representing a, the, the territory of primarily high school students, although the large um, turf field to the top left is also, um, it provides additional K-8 uh, active play area when it's not in use by the high school. So there, there's a wealth of outdoor use and flexible active space um, on this site. The orange uh, is dedicated K-8 play space. Um, so the space in the center of the buildings that which is known as the Community Commons, is dedicated to the K-5 students during the day, um, 22,000 square feet, um, roughly 62 square feet per student when you break it down um, in terms of numbers. And then two other zones for K-8 use uh, near the K-8 entry plaza and the learning gardens, and then as well uh, between the high school social space and the fields um, is a large flexible play area that's primarily during the day used by middle school students for uh, PE and, and recreation. 
This is a graphic that illustrates um, sort of a one-to-one -one comparison of the active play areas at Annie Yates that currently exist and the proposed community commons. Keep in mind that uh, the, this is a graphic that um, it, the spaces aren't going to be the same, but what we wanted to illustrate here is not only the size, but the flexibility and adaptability that the community commons has that will really um, mimic and echo a lot of the success of what uh, uh, makes Annie Yates a, a great environment right now. And again, this is another comparative graphic that shows um, how these three distinct spaces at Annie Yates also fit within that community commons uh, arrangement to, to provide that flexibility of play, active, medium activity, and the low activity. <clears throat> so again, the site plan, the, the big concepts here are, again, the, the outdoor environment offers a variety of flexible spaces for school and community use. And then there are earth forms and the way that um, we've worked with our design team to shape the ground uh, throughout the space. So berms and mounds not only provide separation and safety between age groups, but they also help with wayfinding and guide you through the facility. So this is a, another graphic um, related to uh, active play within the community commons. And what you'll see are um, uh, dots representing individual students. And what we've modeled here is a, a recess with 180 students uh, capacity, which we worked with the teachers and, and came to understand that, that that number is sort of the, the maximum density in terms of a scheduled recess throughout the day that, that would occur. So what you see here is how um, students from a high activity, you know, running around, breathing heavily to low activity, reading a book and socializing can all coexist within the same space and, and allow those uses to, um, to happen at the same time. And then another graphic here just to illustrate some of the features of the community commons that allow the space to be used for a safe play environment. <clears throat> All of the roofs of the, the surrounding canopies slope toward the commons to allow balls to roll back in. Let's if somebody's you know has poor aim, <laughs> or if balls get kicked up there, which happens all the time. Um, there's a welded wire mesh gates and fence around the entire perimeter of the commons, and you can see in the blue lines there. So it's it's a really tight um, a woven metal mesh that would preclude any balls or, or anything from passing through it, and it also uh, prevents climbing. Um, there's an area for a running track uh, around the perimeter of, of the active play area that still allows those kind of more quiet zones to occur within it. Um, and there's a, uh, the dashed green line represents a, um, uh, a railing above that's actually almost 17 feet above the play surface. So again, it, it's a good way of containing the activity and, and balls within the commons during the day. Again, this is just uh, that same kind of graphic, but shifting over to the other side of the K-8 building and looking at that um, dedicated 6 to 8 uh, PE and flexible pl play space. And again, the berms provide um, a perimeter uh, to this space that you know will allow balls to roll back into the field. And then um, there's some safety netting that we're uh, currently refining in the next phase of work to protect spectators and uh, potentially anyone who would be in this space during a baseball event. Uh, this is a diagram that um, illustrates the uh, separation of uses and age groups uh, in the facility um, during a normal school day. The orange color is uh, public access. You can see that the pool, locker rooms, and the recreation facilities are, are dedicated um, to the public. Uh, however, the, there has been some discussion and, and, a, and, a, um, and a desire uh, to have scheduled shared use of the pool facility during the day by the students, and so this design allows for that scheduling to, to happen, and um, we think it would be a great benefit um, for the school curriculum, uh, <clears throat> and also just to have that um, sort of interactivity again between uh, cross-pollination of the community and the school. Um, with supervised adults in, in place and making sure it's a safe environment. <clears throat> um, the light green spaces uh, are public limited access, so the community gardens and um, the K-8 entry to the north and then a covered walkway along 
uh, the western edge of the, the administration and community services building. And again, those are areas that the public would not be able to access until they've um, been allowed through a secure passageway. Uh, so there's a line of security outside of that, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Um, the K-8 shared area is uh, what you'll see sort of just to the south of the K-8 entry, and it's really a flexible play space that not only provides shelter for children who are waiting on rides um, at the end of the day, but provides a, a flexible play area for uh, for congregating and gathering, informal a, a, and also during um, during play times. Uh, K-5 in the uh, dark green color. Um, again, you see the, the kindergarten classrooms on the ground level, kindergarten and first grade classrooms, and then the commons, uh, which is used by K-5 for recess during the day. Um, six to eight again uh, in this triangular area. Um, that's their dedicated space for phys ed uh, during the school day. Nine to 12, you can see is in the pink, um, and what's not represented in this graphic, which showed up in a couple previous slides ago, uh, is a, a dedicated terrace at the second level um, that also contributes to the flexible and social space for the high school students. So this is a diagram that um, the goal is really here to illustrate uh, the points of security and how this this facility, one of the um, biggest challenges that we faced as a design team was to maintain this sense of openness and, and a, a welcoming feeling, uh, but still providing the ability to secure and to uh, enclose certain areas um, and separate user groups when, when needed. So the diagram on the right shows, um, in general, this, the solution that we've proposed for that those conditions where there are a series of folding gates that can be opened or closed depending on um, operational agreements. And um, those occur at everywhere where you see a dot on the plan. So the green dots are the gates that are, um, that are open during school hours and, and that are you know, directly supervised um, by visual control of, of space. Uh, staff members will be, um, have eyes on those gates at all times, uh, but they will be open. And then the, the red dots with the gray in the middle show gates that will be secured and closed during school hours, uh, either to separate community uses from school uses or to separate high school from uh, primary school uses. So one of the key features of this design, as the, the last slide illustrated, is flexibility. And, and um, the first line on this slide, operational options, is. Uh, illustrated by that concept where the facility can accommodate shared use and, a, and a, you know, it can be a real mixing pot or it can also be um, a series of contained and secured spaces that can uh, operate simultaneously. Um, partnerships, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a, a model for partnership, the city and the school coming together. And really what we're, what we're gaining is program. Um, we're, we're gaining opportunity for program and delivery of program and we're sharing space. And, um, you know, it's, it's a progressive mentality that I think is gonna, it's gonna show up more and more in, in civic projects uh, going forward. Um, virtual sharing, the, the entire campus will be um, equipped with wireless networks um, and will allow, uh, you know, sharing of, of data and information as well as security systems um, so that all of that can be monitored together um, and also, you know, individually controlled from both the city and the school side. <clears throat> Shared use, time of use, um, going back to the, uh, the ability to transform the facility from an open and mixed use um, for a community event on a weekend or evening to a school operation uh, strategy where um, security is, is uh, you know, goal number one. Um, spatial adaptability, um, this is another thing that we strove for in the design, is to design spaces that can be modified and configured differently over time if, if programs or curriculum change, uh, the ability to um, you know, combine two classes or to um, gather large groups of students in a, in a large space uh, or to s divide them up. We've really um, worked hard to, to maintain that flexibility in this design. Um, <clears throat> and then program space allocations. Um, obviously, the going back to schematic design uh, that you saw in November of last year, the, uh, the parking lot area of the current site plan is uh, will accommodate a, 
uh, growth in student population over time. And there is a schematic design in place that links that phase two work into the current design. Uh, again, the educational components of this facility are all designed um, with Title V compliance. Uh, so general purpose classrooms are 960 square feet or larger. Um, kindergarten classrooms are 1350 and again those contain their own dedicated restrooms. Um, and then science classrooms are 1300 square feet or larger. So uh, these are just some images of, of uh, what the, yeah, as we get closer and closer to brick and mortar and, and we see um, this thing coming to life, uh, we had the opportunity to explore some imagery that would um, take this to an, a, another level of reality. So uh, what you see here is the entry from 47th Street looking toward um, the high school social area, the canopy above it, and again that idea of flight uh, welcoming you in. This is looking from the uh, new athletic fields um, toward the K-8 uh, building and uh, the stair towers um, become observation decks uh, that look out onto the fields and out to the west toward Mount Tam and the bay. This is the community commons during a school day and as you can see it accommodates a variety of uses. There is active play in the background and um, sort of a more casual uh, smaller group play in the foreground and then um, a berm and soft uh, comfortable reading space for, for kids who are more um, quiet and who may spend more time in the library during recess. This is a view uh, from the high school terrace of that same space at night and showing what an evening event may look like. Um, when I saw this image coming together I was reminded of the image that we showed when um, back when you hired us to do this work and it, it's pretty striking how how close they are to each other in some ways that the feeling is um, you know we've, we've tried to as much as we could to maintain that feeling of of life and of excitement and um, what you see running along the edge of the, the building and the courtyard here is what we're calling the community canvas which is a, um, a structure that um, is a framework for uh, manifesting the the life that is going to to come and lit in and is going to be brought to this facility so uh, it's something that we we know will change over time and we and we're actually celebrating that this is a view of the facility from 53rd and San Pablo what we call the gateway plaza um, you're standing in Oakland looking in Emeryville and um, you're seeing into the community multi-purpose room for a movie night um, and then to the right of the image is the entry canopy for the K-8, to which is um, closed during evening hours. And then to the left you see the uh, entry canopy on San Pablo, which you would take a ride and that would lead you into the community plaza. But again, the, the idea of flight and um, soaring uh, is, is evident in this view and is something that we hope will be communicated to everybody who drives by and who passes this place and, uh, you know, invites them inside. <laughs> now this is a view uh, looking from San Pablo during the day uh, on a weekend um, looking through the library courtyard into the community commons and again the the canopy uh, marking the entry point and inviting um, people in from the community. On the left you have the cafe at, which is part of the library on the ground level and on the right you have the uh, community services and district administration offices on the bottom floor and the top floor is the school-based health center. So now we're going to shift to some interior perspectives. This is a view um, from the school multi-use room. Out to the left is um, a, a terrace that looks out over the fields and the play, uh, play areas uh, to the west. And then to the right um, if you walked through that door you would be in the community commons. So again this is a space that can be divided up during the school day but then can also be opened up at night to, to become a, a performance space and, and a, a place for gathering. This is a view of a typical high school class, uh, science classroom, science lab. And um, <clears throat> some, some things to note here are the you know flexible electrical wiring at, at the top and then also the, the um, uh, very flexible and improved um, storage on both sides uh, 
of the classroom with sinks um, and other equipment readily available for experiments and project-based learning. This is a view of the um, of the library space, um, and again, this is uh, this is a view that uh, in the foreground you have uh, a children's reading area. Um, on behind uh, a couple of the stacks, you have a zone for um, teenagers. And again, this is uh, we're working very closely with the library staff and uh, district's consultants to to help program this area further and and uh, and refine the relationships of that space and, and really understand the operations day to day. But we feel that this design um, in, in the back, you also have a computer classroom and a flexible meeting room that can be used for by the community in the evenings. Um, and then if you were to walk around the circulation desk to the left, that's the cafe. So again, it's it's a it's a hub. It's a, an area of um, where where paths cross, and, and that's that's a wonderful thing. Um, and uh, we will continue to work with staff on on developing you know the operations and making sure that that the facility design supports those goals. And this is a view um, looking from the top floor of uh, uh, the district administration um, and. Community service to the admin building, and this is the welcome lobby. So this is sort of the front door for all community services activities. This is where you come and check in, and to, through uh, through the glass uh, here you see an act activity center, um, pool tables, game room. Uh, through the glass there is the community plaza, which is a space that's open to the public during all normal operating hours, and then beyond you see the com community multi-use building. Uh, which also contains the senior center, uh, catering kitchen, uh, restroom facilities, and then the Kinder Buddies um, uh, pre-K education center on, on the other side. <clears throat> so just to uh, remind you of the timeline for the project, um, we're now uh, complete with design development. Um, we received approval from the Board of Trustees uh, last Wednesday night. and. <clears throat> Construction documentation is now commencing, which is commonly known as, or formerly known as blueprints. It's, everything's digital now, of course, but um, we're moving right along and uh, still on schedule for occupancy in August of 2015. And just uh, a reminder of where we are um, with the construction budget. This is the number um, 59.9 million uh, for the hard cost of the facility, uh, 2.8 million for FF&E, fixtures, furnishings, and equipment for a total of 62.7. Some upcoming activities of note. Um, we are continuing to work with the teachers and staff. Um, this May 9th date is a uh, maybe superseded. Um, but just, just to let the committee members know that we are continuing to work with the staff on um, specifically that K-5 play space in the community commons and making sure that all the equipment and all of the safety measures are uh, uh, taken account, um, are accounted for, and are um, designed appropriately. And then, uh, in terms of our student engagement, we've—it's um, great to hear the presentation earlier tonight, and I, I applaud um, this district for uh, its commitment to having students be involved. It's—it's it's a wonderful thing, and um, I think it—it it helps to cultivate leaders. It helps to cultivate uh, healthier communities. So. Something that we've enjoyed taking a part in as well. Um, we've been working with uh, the art and design class at Emory Secondary and Ms. Stillman. Um, they actually had an opening of their work. Um, it opened last night at CCA, and I would invite a lot of you to, uh, any of you to, um, watching at home or here in the room tonight, to go see some of their work. They they um, worked have been working all semester on ideas for um, art installations at the ECCL. Um, so it's it's really taking a, a look into the future there, which is exciting. <clears throat> um, and then on June 6th, actually that, that same group of students will be here presenting to you um, their work and the culmination of their efforts this semester. So that should be exciting if you aren't able to make it to the exhibition. <clears throat> and then another piece of, uh, of our work that um, will continue to develop uh, through the con construction document phase is um, a physical model, which we hope to um, supplement with uh, literature and, and pamphlets that can be taken away so 
and, and uh, that model will primarily live here at Roy's office, but we would the goal is to have it that be transportable and flexible so that it can be present at community events um, and uh, and folks can learn more about the design and and get involved.